Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new podcast of the ETSS Verona Member Series on Intelligence and Military Strategy. I am Dalino Delle Fave, and today we have the pleasure to have as our guest, Professor David Burigana. Good morning, Professor. Good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for the invitation. You're welcome. He is Professor in History of International Organizations and International History of Science and Technology at the University of Padua. And he's also work package leader for the Horizon 2020 project in Shide, inventing a shared science diplomacy for Europe. His main research themes revolve around the history of international relations, in particular scientific cooperation and diplomacy, Atlantic and European security issues and military cooperation. Today, he will talk with us about a discussed topic, the EU defense strategy. In the recent years, there has been a growing request by a wide range of political forces for an autonomous European defense strategy, independent from NATO and the Anglo-American initiatives. The EU developed indeed a common security and defense policy, but for many commentators and analysts, it is insufficient, unable to provide a true security framework. Therefore, which are its characteristics, how it works in practice, the EU defense strategy? Um, but today we have a very important, first of all, when uh, I speak about defense and defense in Europe. Um, I start with the institutional point of view. And today we have two, three important institutions. Uh, the first one is the uh, European Union Military Committee created in 2001 and chaired by uh, a chief of staff. Uh, uh, of uh, some uh, member state of European Union, and today it is the uh, general, an Italian general, Claudio Graziano. Uh, this committee must uh, coordinate uh, the European Union military operations, uh, and particularly through uh, the uh, Eurofor and uh, Euromar also. Euro 4 are today the uh, European Union Battle Group uh, created in 2007 and uh, Euromar also is uh, the maritime, uh, the Navy, European Navy uh, structure to coordinate operation for instance since 1990s against uh, Pirates. And today, with the Irene operation, also chaired by an Italian officer, an admiral, De Agostini, Irene is one um, a very important operation to control the illegal, uh, illegal uh, trades, or better, the instability in the uh, Mediterranean. Uh, in my opinion, the institutional point is very important. I want to quote also the European Defense Agency created in 2004 uh, with uh, the mission uh, to coordinate, uh, to organize uh, particularly armaments cooperation uh, and also some studies about uh, the strategy, the European Union strategy and uh, the armaments needs of this uh, strategy. Uh, the second point, in my opinion, is uh, because I am an historian of international relations and an historian of European integration and also an historian of science and technology in the international context, the second point is uh, uh, to go back uh, to, to history, also recent history, and uh, perhaps it will be nice and interesting also to understand uh, today the perspective of uh, uh, European Union strategy and also after September 2021 with uh, the launch by Ursula von der Leyen of this uh, uh, idea for a European uh, army or defense. I think it will be interesting uh, to remember uh, the debate about uh, a European defense identity 
uh, in the first half of 1990s, particularly in 1991, 1992, uh, um, when uh, with uh, the Balkans wars, um, above all public opinion, uh, um, wanted uh, uh, not uh, a solution to European defense. We have uh, and we will have NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, but uh, a project about uh, an independent uh, uh, European defense. Uh, and uh, in this in this period, uh, we will see for the first time the Eurocorp. Uh, uh, Eurocorp in Strasbourg, uh, created uh, uh, by a Frank M initiative, uh, launched in 1988 by Cole and Mitterrand around the Franco German Brigade. The idea was uh, to, to organize uh, around the Eurocorp uh, a a European defense, uh, some unities uh, for the European defense. At the same time, we have also EAG, a European Air Group uh, in the UK, for coordinate the air strategy. And last but not the least, uh, Euromar 4 and also Euro 4, uh, particularly three, four types of uh, land unities. One of these also today is the Italian uh, Spanish Amphibious Initiative. Uh, which was the problem? The problem uh, was not a problem. First of all, the opportunity was in the Maastricht Treaty, the idea of the PESC or PEST, uh, the European policy on security and on defense. This was an opportunity, but at the same time, uh, since the second half of 1990s, not only uh, the leading politicians, but also in Europe, the public opinion uh, uh, became aware that uh, it was impossible to have uh, a coordinated defense policy without a strong uh, foreign policy coordination. Uh, and in fact, at the time, uh, United Nations asked for uh, international military operations, uh, not to European Union, but uh, NATO, and uh, also the Kosovo War was uh, the hand also of the open to have a sort of uh, international government uh, led by United Nations uh, with uh, the bombing operations uh, organized through NATO but led uh, by USA. And this, uh, frankly speaking, uh, was uh, not uh, uh, a US uh, politics, uh, was a uh, Euro-American policies. This was uh, decided uh, uh, by Washington uh, and by the European uh, uh, states at the time. Um, in my opinion, uh, one uh, another important element is uh, the um, techno-scientific cooperation. And when we speak about defense, we have to speak about armaments. And um, if uh, we need European armaments for a European defense, or we need a European armaments policy in order to understand that in Europe we have uh, some uh, important country with uh, relevant uh, interest in armaments production, like uh, France and also Germany, and up to date in some fields, uh, Italy too. And the other, uh, the other 27 countries must accept uh, this uh, situation. 
And because otherwise uh, we we will experiment uh, the history uh, in the sense that uh, in the past uh, um, all uh, project about uh, a European strategy for defense clashed with the national interest, French, uh, Italian, and also German, and at the time British interest uh, for uh, for leading. Uh, uh, armaments cooperation in Europe. We have uh, many examples. Uh, one of the best uh, is the aircraft cooperation with uh, the debate about uh, at uh, the beginning of 1970s about uh, the multi-role combat aircraft, uh, a project launched first of all by France and UAK and then uh, the result was the Tornado fighter produced by a, a trilateral consortium, uh, UAK, Federal Republic of Germany and Italy, in front of the national uh, trajectory represented in France by Mirage. And, the next step was the debate uh, at the beginning of 1980s about uh, uh, Eurofighter, the present Typhoon, and there we have the same situation. And not because at the time Avion Marcel Dassault, the national aircraft uh, team in France, was uh, owned by a private. Uh, uh, Marcel Dassault. We have to remember that in 1981, uh, Avion Marcel Dassault was bought, or better, was controlled by uh, French state. Uh, President Mitterrand signed uh, the, the agreement with uh, Dassault uh, for this, uh, and then uh, the decision to go alone with uh, the Rafale. Uh, was a political decision uh, by the French president uh, from uh, since uh, Charles de Gaulle up to uh, François Mitterrand. And I think uh, this question of armaments cooperation is not a popular uh, target uh, in the newspaper, Pirep. Uh, or in media, but I think uh, is the strategic one. This is uh, one of the best uh, uh, field to analyze the reality, the concrete perspective of the European uh, defense. Thank you for this, uh, uh, for your insights. So um, the main issue is without a proper procurement uh, cooperation and military and technological cooperation, there will not be no army. And without uh, this, uh, uh, with a, a common European army needed, need, a, um, let's say, a um, unified procurement policy at the European level. Do you, yes. think, do you think that it is, uh, feasible in the near future? Yeah, no, this is no, not, not only in the future. I like to speak about the little committee created uh, in 1952 by an Italian Franco initiative, Finabel. Uh, when Finabel started also with the participation after the Western European Union and uh, the German entry in NATO, also with Germany and uh, the Benelux countries. Uh, when this is little committee uh, started, uh, the discussion was about standardization and armaments cooperation. Uh, this is one example and up to today, uh, created in 2004, the European Defense Agency must speak about this uh, standardization 
and uh, in order uh, to organize a common, uh, I, I prefer to use this common procurement policy in the European Union, but uh, like uh, with Finabel in 1952 and also after for instance, in 1973, when UK entered in EC and also in the little Finabel, and then Finabel was transformed not in a committee for armaments cooperation, but a military committee uh, for speaking about standardization uh, for common of military operations. This is this was very different because at the time for UAK, first of all, the, the framework for armaments cooperation was NATO. Uh, and this was a choice not for a European armaments cooperation, but for a Euro Atlantic. This was clear at the time, and also for Bonn and Paris. Uh, the choice was for uh, an intergovernmental cooperation, not a common cooperation inside the European framework, and not because uh, the uh, Rome Treaty uh, limited the uh, cooperation about uh, strategic products uh, like armaments. This was a political choice at the time. Today, with the European Defense Agency, we have a very, I think, a good perspective. Uh, also, from the institutional point of view, we have the European Union Military Committee, with also uh, a permanent representative of the whole armies uh, uh, participating in the committee, with the special military attache. We have also a political committee, in parallel with the, the European uh, Union Military Committee. What we need, we need, a, 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 frankly speaking, a debate, a real debate about which are the interests in armaments production for France, for Germany too, and also, I am Italian, for Italy. Uh, to think that we have, we need not a strictly military approach, Today we see the debate about the Franco-German big tank and the proposal uh, to buy also the Italian Otto Melara, a very specialized firm for guns around the world, very important. Not only from the strictly military point of view, a debate, we need the debate about uh, in a, in a in a larger sense about uh, strategic techno technologies, strategic high technologies, uh, which are relevant today, not only for the battleground directly, but for security, uh, for intelligence. And we have uh, battleground, security, intelligence, and communication for elements very important for a military strategy. And this, we need a real, fr frankly, open debate about which are national interests behind. This is behind this uh, idea of the European Union military st strategy. And in this sense, I think this will be a diplomatic opportunity to uh, take account also of the Polish point of view, of Poland national interest in this question, in order also to suggest that Pirates European market is better than uh, other global market, uh, like for instance, US to buy national armaments. Uh, and this not because we are obliged by European Union law, but because we perceive an opportunity. We may see uh, an opportunity on this, also because our national interests are uh, in, 
are uh, taken in account by the other uh, countries. In this sense, also the little medium countries in Europe may be interested to participate in this debate, uh, but for this we need uh, a very important uh, political decision, frankly speaking, not a European level, but at a national level and for some countries. And also a very important, very nice uh, heart uh, of diplomacy. Uh, we need also uh, of this, of uh, uh, curious diplomats uh, interested also in defense and armaments production. Last but not uh, the least, an example, but it is only a perspective today, is the treaty signed by France and Italy on 25 November. We see the framework of the treaty, a very big, long treaty, because also we have some important letter of intentions also for technologies, strategic technologies, and also for defense. Perhaps this is an opportunity to speak with Germany and to think also to relaunch on different uh, uh, asset, the European uh, construction. Defense is not one of these asset, is one of the, uh, of the most relevant and important asset in this relaunch of the European integration. Crystal clear, Professor. I thank you for taking part in this podcast and I hope you, you could be again our guest in the future. Thanks so much for the invitation. It's a pleasure and uh, thanks. Bye. Fantastic. It's a pleasure. You're welcome. Uh, to our viewers, I thank you um, to have followed our interview until the end and I wish you an amazing experience with the ETSS Verona. Have a good day.